climbers. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. Um, this is the first time I'm here at the IT DEFCON, and it's awesome. I love to tell other people about how to do things with Delphi, and that's why I prepared this session. Um, just a bunch of tips and tricks and what, what kind of tools you want in your daily development cycle. Um, so I'm happy to be here at the conference for the first time. I hope they invite me later on, so please give me high marks on uh, the conference uh, um, review. Uh, no kidding. Um, just let me know what you think about it. Interrupt me. Um, the whole idea about a session like this is that you learn more than I do. And I learn every session, still. Um, so I'm. I'm a one-man company, it's called bsharp.net, um, so you can hire me if you want to, or you can just mail me if you have a question, or uh, send me a, a Twitter message. Um, I, I love to teach people, uh, and I love to answer questions, so I'm on Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a, is a great site for getting questions answered, um, and I think I answer hundreds of questions there. Um, because. I love to teach, um, which means it's a two-way thing. Um, I tell you things, uh, and especially during this session, I invite you to tell other people how you do things in Delphi, what kind of tools you use, what kind of techniques you use inside your daily development routine. Um, so I'm going to do demos, um, but I also want to discuss with you things. And I got lots of slides, um, and the slides are a reminder for me um, to, to, um, to not skip the things I, I wanted to tell you about. Uh, and usually a session like this is starting a bit disorganized because of the discussion and people asking things, and I pull things ahead and I break things, and that's the whole idea of software development. Uh, software development, it's... Um, it's a daily fight, but it's a funny fight. And at the end of the day, you solve the problem. Um, and solving the problem often takes a lot of time. Um, and that's why it's not bad breaking things in a presentation like this, because I then can show you how to unbreak things and make them work again. Um, so please interrupt me whenever you feel like you have a question or a remark or want to share something with um, uh, some, uh, the audience. Um, so what I'm going to tell about is what I think should be a minimum set of um, software you need to install in addition to Windows and Delphi on your system. Um, it's the software that I use on a daily basis. Um, and I'm going to do a couple of power user demos. Um, I already told that. Please get a Delphi version that includes the source code. Um, it's one of the best ways to learn how the Delphi team wrote the RTL, the VCL, and stuff like that. It's an excellent learning opportunity to see how they wrote their code. Um, which means that on my system, oops, um, I have a directory called RTL VCL sources, which includes all Delphi source code since Delphi 1. Um, lots of my clients use older Delphi versions. Uh, let, let, let's do a couple of hands here. Um, who thinks he's using the oldest Delphi version on the group? No hands. Can't be. What, what Delphi version are you using? Seven. Okay. Sometimes there are situations where for a particular project you want to stay with an old Delphi version because you know there will not be much maintenance on it and it makes sense because it's, it's very contained. It makes sense keeping that in an old Delphi version. That's not bad. Um, it's good to be at XE3 because there's lots of new uh, things in it. Uh, it's exciting, it's flexible, it's stable. Um, but sometimes you have projects that you want to keep in a particular Delphi version. That's not a bad thing. I, th I think it was Scott Hanselman. Um, he did a comparison. Um, 
on cloud computing. You can rent computing power from Amazon. And he did a quick calculation um, on renting a couple of machines there for a year and what it would cost to build the machines and host them himself at an ISP and, and build a couple of spare machines just in case one broke. I think he, for about half the price, or less than half the price, he could uh, build two or three times the computing power and, and still be cheaper. Um, so hardware is cheap. Um, so s s speed should not be an issue uh, to, to skip a, a, a virtual machine. In fact, what I have here, it's, it's a MacBook Air. It's not a fast machine, but it runs perfectly fine for day-to-day -day development work. Um, just make sure um, you have enough memory. Um, CPU power is not important. Memory is important and a fast hard drive. And if you can afford it, buy an SSD drive. Last year, I put an SSD drive in my main development machine. It, it, the improvement was like tenfold. It was so much faster. Windows booting in like 20, 30 seconds. A VM booting in just the same time because disk I.O. is zero. Okay, um, so get yourself a Delphi version. Um, and for me, um, there's three things that I always install after installing Delphi. It's GXperts, which is free, and it's Model Maker Code Explorer, which is like 100 euros. Um, and uh, depending on the Delphi version, IDE Fixpack. Um, IDE Fixpack is a blessing, especially uh, for Delphi XA2 and lower. There's no version yet for Delphi XA3, which is a good sign, because uh, this guy, um, Andreas Hausladen, is very fast with, uh, with fixes, and um, um, when he doesn't bring out the fix, it means it's a really stable Delphi version. Um, so I'll be showing a couple of G-Expert things. In fact, I already shown everything. Um, which is a tool for searching. Um, more on that later. Um, and then start downloading a couple of things um, from SourceForge. Um, and Mercadero, since Delphi XE, is hosting all their demos on SourceForge. Um, so you can access the full history of what they have done in the demos. And they continue adding demos even after releasing a, um, a Delphi version. I'll show more on that later. Um, in fact, from Delphi, there is now access um, um, to version control systems in, in a system that's called Version Insight. And there's a very friendly German guy that is, um, his, his name is Uwe Schuster. Um, there's a link later on. So get this um, and install Tortoise um, SVN, which is a great tool for downloading a subversion based version control. Um, actually, when I switch to everything, um, I have a directory called version control. Oh, no. This is my version control directory. And, and these are repositories I'm using a lot. Um, this is me, this is a company um, well, this is actually a collection of people in the Netherlands called Better Office that work together on Delphi projects. And so I maintain a lot of uh, things there. Um, this is Fast, the Fast Memory Manager. And this is the RAT Studio demos. And this is RAT Studio version inside. Um, so you can get them all from SourceForge. And um, Tortoise SVN, and there's also Tortoise Git allows you to, um, for instance, get the latest version of the Red Studio version inside stuff. And then it starts updating it. Um, and this makes sure you always got the latest version. So Tortoise integrates with the Windows Explorer and allows you to access um, a subversion version controls repositories. And this allows you to always be at the latest version um, of version inside or the Red Studio demos. Um, and those are excellent learning opportunities as well. Okay, let's let's move on to the um, the next things. Um, who is using Visual Studio in addition to Delphi? Okay, there's only very few people. Um, 
for those in the Visual Studio world, Team Foundation system um, is, used, is, is most often used as a version control system. And it integrates um, with SVN, so you can access it from both Visual Studio and Delphi through a tool um, called SVN Bridge. Um, if you want more information about that, come to me after the session and I can explain more. Um, then for the generic tools, those are tools that do not have to do with software development, but are handy for any power user. Um, I love the tools from Sysinternals. Who, who has used Sysinternals tools himself? Things like Process Explorer, um, Debug Viewer, etc. They are invaluable uh, and they are free. Um, and everything. I already showed everything, and it's so natural that you almost do not notice it. Um, so, I'll show it. This is everything. On the top bar, there's a search box. And the result is instantaneous. You get immediate result. It takes about less than 1% of your CPU, a little bit of hard disk space, and it, it completely indexes your NTFS disks in the background. And it's always up to date. The cool thing is, if you have understandable names of files and directory, it allows you to very quickly find back your files. And it's way, way, way faster than the built-in search engine of Windows. Um, it only indexes file names, and that's why it's so fast. So you cannot search inside files, you search file names. Um, but if you have good naming, don't we all have good namings of our projects and files? Um, it's very easy to find your, your stuff back. Um, this is indispensable. Then um, 7-zip. Um, it's a really great compression program. Uh, it's faster than WinZip, and it's better than WinZip, and you need it because, especially in the Delphi world, uh, for the uh, Delphi installations, Delphi installations are based on 7-zip uh, on compression, so you need a, a tool that can decompress 7-zip. 7-zip um, is free, it's light, and it integrates with, uh, with Windows Explorer. And then usually, I add a lot of stuff like this, uh, something to print to PDF, um, something to display PDF. Um, I s for, for a couple of years, I switched away from the Adobe uh, PDF reader, uh, but I switched back a couple of years ago because it was much faster, uh, much more stable, and didn't use as much memory as it used to uh, use. So it's, they improved it a lot. Um, alternatives are, are things like Foxit, and there are, there are other other PDF readers. Um, Google Chrome, which used to be a very lightweight web browser, and now it's about as slow as Internet Explorer, um, but they update much more often than all the other web browsers, and that's that's the reason I um, I use it a lot. Um, and then uh, some form of antivirus, which can work against you. Um, we'll see that in a couple of minutes. Uh, Paint.net is a very good program for post-processing uh, screenshots and, and stuff like that. Um, and if I was doing web development, not, not many people doing web development. If you do web development, make sure you install Fiddler because it, it's an HTTP proxy and it shows you what goes in the background on all the HTTP traffic. Um, Let's do a demo on GXperts. GXperts integrates itself into, uh, into Delphi. Um, and this is one of the search results. I was searching for the unit um, to make sure I wasn't missing any projects for the next presentation tomorrow morning about unit testing. Um, this is one of the most powerful features of GXperts. It's so much faster than the built-in Delphi search. Um, you can give it a starting directory, um, or you can tell it to, uh, to search in your project if you have a project open. I don't have a project open, which means that these ones are grayed out. Um, but if I reopen this one, 
which is a bunch of, um, of unit testing projects. Um, I can go to the GXperch menu and then do grab, uh, grab search for the unit inside my project group. And it's lightning fast. Um, OK, I'm cheating a little bit. This MacBook Air also has an SSD drive. Um, make sure your day-to-day -day development projects are on the fastest disk in your system. You really want that. Um, who, knows, who knows the name Denny Thorpe? OK, Denny Thorpe um, used to be one of the compiler engineers at back then Borland. And they had an automated build of the whole Delphi um, product. And he did a tiny research pro uh, project on how to improve that. Um, back then, because this, this was early this century, uh, you didn't have SSD. But what he did instead was put 15K RPM SCSI disks in the machine um, and make the build process like 10 times as fast as it used to be. So they could build in um, about an hour instead of in half a day. Um, and being able to build your software fast and in an efficient uh, manner um, is very important to track if you broke anything. Because the sooner you find out you broke things, you can fix it and it doesn't take as long to, to find um, the point in time when you broke it and remember what you changed at that point in time. Okay, so this is, this is for me, the, the number one reason for using G-Experts. And there's a couple of other things that are also very handy um, in G-Experts. For instance, the good old ASCII chart. I know there is a built-in window thing that can show you the character set, but having this in Delphi um, and allowing you to view both the decimal and the hexadecimal uh, things and switch from, ho from low ASCII to high ASCII, and it's so easy. Um, and you can copy paste from this. So you double click on the letter to insert it here, and then you can copy paste from, uh, from here, right from inside your Delphi IDE. Um, another cool thing here um, is um, okay, let's, let's create a a small application um, with a button on this. Um, how do I get in um, IDE inside? It's control and then a dot. Uh, I wish I had a camera here so I could show um, the, the keyboard. Uh, learning keyboard shortcuts in Delphi is very, very important. And now I want to have code to dynamically create this button for me. Um, so what you could do is copy the button to um, um, to the clipboard, um, edit, copy, um, and put the speed button here uh, for inserting it. Double click here and then paste the text. Um, lots of people don't know that if you copy something on your form designer to the clipboard that it's actually text and you can paste it in the code editor. And now you need to have a local var uh, T button uh, and, and, and then redo all the manual work like saying uh, the button becomes T button oh. create self and This is tedious work. I have done this a zillion of zillions of times, and it, it, it takes way too much uh, um, uh, work. So what you can do instead is just select the button, and then uh, where is it hidden? Uh, components to code. And what you now have is this piece of code on the clipboard. Done. 
This is what G experts can do for you. There's much more in it, uh, but those are a couple of highlights um, why I like IDE experts. Um, there are many more. There are CNPEC, um, uh, there are commercial ones. Um, make sure that you search around on the internet or uh, on the news groups or Stack Overflow um, and, and find yourself a couple of IDE experts that help you in the specific areas uh, where you lose a lot of time. One of the ways of finding out where you lose time is keeping a log on paper or in Excel or something where you note down for a week um, what you do every day and how much time it's, uh, it's costing you. Um, that will teach you um, where you can improve your skills or where you need to find tools that help you be faster. Okay. Um, oh, source exports. For who hates writing documentation? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're here. Um, oh, almost done. Um, there's this um, source export. And what you now can do is um, telling it how it should export. Uh, and by default, it exports it as text, RTF, and HTML to the clipboard. Um, so you can select everything and say copy. And now in WinWord, you see, no mouse. Just Windows R and then WinWord. And then um, Alt-ES, paste a special. And you can select how you want to paste it in Word. And when you paste it as HTML, you got syntax highlighted Delphi code inside your documentation. Doing this by hand, don't. This is much, much easier. Um, if you have a try finally statement, then Delphi will guarantee that this piece will run all the time. This will only run on an exception, and you can specify which kind of exception you, need, you want this to run on. Um, this is very convenient because it allows you to close a file, um, close a network stream, release memory, uh, do cleanup. And we all make a mess, so we often need cleanup. Um, and we don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> now, th this is needed in specific areas where you exactly know how to handle a mistake. Um, so you see this in specific areas of your Delphi program, and you see this in more generic areas of your Delphi program. Um, who, wh wh what do you think the ratio is? Um, do you think it's 50-50? How many do you think it's 50-50? Okay, how, okay. Let's, how many think that there's more try accept than try finally? There's a couple of more. So the majority thinks try finally is more used than try accept. How much more? Oh, 10 to 1. Okay, 10 to 1. Who thinks it's less than 10 to 1? It's, it's like a bidding contest, right? <laughs> okay, let's find out. So we search for the word accept. This will take a while because it searches all the Delphi files for the word accept. And then it will show here um, the number of times it occurred. Okay. It's two and a half thousand times. I use many version control systems, but for most of my Delphi code, I use subversion. Um, and um, subversion is a bit special in the sense that mostly it's used, it's organized by having a trunk where the most recent version is and some branches that mark uh, specific versions or release times, etc. Um, as for instance, you can see, uh, for instance, here, Red Studio Demos, it has a trunk. 
um, with all the categories of, um, of demo sources, but it also has branches. There's a couple of things that you need to be able to do with, uh, with version control system. Um, you need to be able to get things initially from a version control system when it's not yet configured on your client. You need to be able to put changes into the version control system or get changes from the version control system. And that's all. Um, these ones are the commands that Tortoise SVN allows you to do. There's a couple of other things that are very interesting. For instance, log and blame. Um, blame sounds negative, but it's not. It allows you to find who changed something in a source file. Um, I'll give an example of that too. For instance, this file um, it's here. It's part of the JCL. JCL is a free um, uh, library for Delphi, and there's also a component uh, version of it called uh, JVCL. And for instance, this file, I want to know who changed it and when. So I go to Tortoise SVN, and I say blame. It goes online. You see, they almost have 4,000 revisions since they uh, started using version control. Uh, this will take a while because it goes through all the revisions this file went through um, and then makes a nice display uh, where you can see for each line in the source code which user changed it for the last time. And there's a hint window that tells you what comment this user put into the check-in comment uh, when applying his changes to the version control system. Tools like this are gold because they quickly allow you to assess when something in a unit broke, uh, who did the change, um, or who fixed something. Because a client is calling you, well, I have this version of the product, and I have this and this problem. Um, is it me, or is it the bug in your in your uh, system? And you can find out. Well, it got uh, fixed in uh, uh, on the 14th of uh, November in 2007 in this and this version. Um, so you must make sure that you're at this version or higher, and you uh, you don't have this problem anymore. Okay. Same with log. show the log from a file. Oh, they wants me. So this is the log since 2007 in the last change. Who changed what? Uh, what was the check-in comment? Okay. Um, another thing um, yeah, that, for instance, on the Red Studio demos, you can ask for a, re a revision graph. Um, I couldn't do these demos uh, on Tuesday because SourceForge was down. That's the drawback of cloud computing. If the cloud fails, you have a problem. Um, but you can see that the XE3 update got, in fact, created from XE3, which got created from the trunk. And from the trunk was also created Red Studio XE. Which one is missing in this graph? So you get trunk, XE, XE3, and XE3 update. Yes, two is missing. So let's see how two got created. Oh crap, they just created XE2, not from the trunk, but just created it. Um, this is not good. If you use a trunk and branches, then you must make sure that every branch somewhere gets either from another branch or from the trunk. Um, so this is also a way of learning how other people use version control systems uh, and what you can, what are best practices, how can you use it best or how you should not use it. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a class hierarchy um, starting with a vehicle, something that can um, drive, and I'm going to create a bike class out of it uh, where you can 
You can drive this one with manpower uh, and a motorcycle that has an engine that consumes fuel. We're going to create a motor vehicle. Hey, that's funny. Those have fuel. Uh, you could do this with interfaces as well, um, but I, I, I'll keep it at a, at a class hierarchy to keep it simple. Um, and from that we derive a car that transports people, and we uh, derive a truck uh, which transports goods. Uh, when you do this in Delphi, it's a lot of typing. I'll show you how to do this in Model Maker Code Explorer that requires far less typing. So here we go. We go to Delphi. Uh, oh, we can we can reuse the project. Project. Uh, okay. So we got a project. I want to create a new unit, and let's create uh, this one as a vehicle. Unit and let's add a class called T vehicle and then let's go to Model Maker Code Explorer Source Explorer Locate Editor Position. Okay. So we have a vehicle and this is this is the browsing part of Model Maker Code Explorer. So first of all it's a browser. And you can see that it has a T vehicle, and you can add a descendant like a T bike. <coughs> and you can add another descendant, which is a uh, motor V. And then you can add a class that is a T car. And you can add a class that is a T truck. Almost no typing. It's very graphical. You think about the design of your software and not about how you do all the typing. Uh, which means you can focus on thinking instead of focus on doing dumb work. And that's the whole thing about doing your development. You need to think about where you want to put your focus and get tools that allow you to focus on the things that matter and the things that do not matter will take less of your time. Um, what did I say? Um, this one has wheels, a constructor and a drive function. Okay. So this one needs a property. And properties are done here. Um, let's make this a read-only property, where you, which you cannot write, and read from a field. Um, let's make the property public, uh, and the field will, by default, uh, I think it will be um, private. Um, so no more typing. Um, and I said it would get a method. Um, and all of them have shortcut keys. So there's control M for adding a method. And drive that has a function result string, uh, which is public and is virtual. OK. Um, So let's give this um, a proper result. Um, so no worries about doing the, the interface and the implementation. Uh, Model Maker Code Explorer will, will take care of that. Um, then add a fuel property. Oh, I want a constructor. OK. So we add a method. Oh. Uh, we add a method and say it's a constructor. And then it knows the constructor needs to have the name create, and you just press enter. Um, it puts a to do, what you st should do after, um, etc., etc. Yeah, this is this is really cool. Um, so bike, 
has a property called fuel. Let's give that type string. Um, oops, and no write exits. Um, let's also give this a constructor. And in the constructors um, set wheels minus one. Okay, something like this. Oh. There's the refactor menu, find unit, because it can't find format, and it's in sysutils. The other great um, thing in Delphi, it very quickly finds um, units that are in your project, but not yet in your users clause. Um, fuel, gas, Um, and this one needs to overwrite drive. So I copied it from vehicle to bike. And Model Maker Code Explorer knows it's from vehicle, so it cannot be virtual anymore. It needs to be overwrite. It automatically does that. Um, Ctrl E goes into the editor. Um, and you can see here it's overwrite. So Model Maker Code Explorer, it works two ways. It knows about the existing Delphi code um, to edit it, um, and it knows how to insert new Delphi code, uh, and if it inserts things that in the class hierarchy are, are already virtual and, and stuff like that, it knows how to change it um, so it, it properly works. Um, I, haven't, I have hardly done any Delphi typing during this demo, and that, that's the whole idea. You don't want to do all this dumb typing. You only want to type where it really matters. And all this superfluous um, um, code that's there as, as glue or because the language um, uh, says it should be in this and this form, um, Model, Mo Model Maker Code Explorer takes care of uh, it for you. Um, so th this is a couple of things um, that are very interesting. Uh, let's make this working. Inherited. Uh, inherited. Uh, drive. So we got this. And uh, not wheels, but fuel. OK. Um, and the same for car. So I can copy this one um, and just drag it to motor vehicle. Um, I might, mm, this is copy paste, right? Mm, this smells a little bit. I, I, I won't change it here to keep the, the demo short. Uh, and then here we could add, uh, no, we add a method constructor and um, I need to take fuel to motor vehicle as well. And here, I go here, and then I say fuel, uh, petrol, that's for a person's car, and a truck. Uh, I copy it, this one over to truck, and then the fuel word becomes diesel. So the, the class hierarchy is a model, so it there are person cars that drive on diesel, and there are trucks that drive on regular petrol, but let, let's keep this a little bit simple. As a short demo on, um, on, on Model Maker Code Explorer. Um, so this, this, this is two tools inside the Delphi IDE that I use most, GXperts and Model Maker Code Explorer. Um, what other tool, are there any other tools that you guys use? Eureka Log. This is one of the reasons you should have more than one web browser on your system, because if it breaks, you can switch to another one. Um, and the other one was PDF in the box. Um, actually, there is another PDF tool that I have experience with, which is from Gnostic. Everybody um, uh, got a, a paper on that. Um, but I'm going to investigate this one, because um, PDF is a, is a thing that I occasionally need. Um, okay. Uh, 
Another one I want to add is mad except. <coughs> mad except is also a, a great tool. Um, and the JCL and JVCL. Okay. It's JDVCL and there must also be some JCL. Yep. Um, okay, more tools, please. You you raised your hand. Yeah, we're using uh, the users analyzer for what we call the unit users analyzer. Yeah, model maker has a uh, an analyzer um, that analyzes your users lists. Um, one of the things that the Delphi compiler is not good at. Yeah, this one. It's a unit dependency analyzer. One of the things that this one um, detects is cycles in your users list. Um, and that's a thing that, the Delphi, that slows down the Delphi compiler a lot. Um, what it also shows is dependencies that might not be there anymore of units that are old and that you probably want to throw out of your project. So this, this is a very, very good tool. We're almost at the end now. Um, I'll show my email address shortly. Twitter, blog, email. Thank you very much for your attention. I uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference.